Hello everyone, my name is Arush Kutala. I'm a functional consultant with Western Computer and welcome to part 4 of 5, our billing rules on project management in Dynamics 365 operations. Today we're going to look at the time and material type billing rule. Now as you can see on my screen, I have a project set up for this type of work, but as with all of our billing, the billing is orchestrated from the project contract. And so that is what we're going to open up. Now, the time and material billing rule, as you can tell from its name, is only valid for time and material type projects. The purpose of the time and material billing rule is to set what type of work is billable and what is not. Now, you may be familiar with line properties, which accomplish about the same function. And you can set up different categories with different line properties. And therefore, if a certain type of category, such as project support work, is generally non-billable, you can set that up to be default across all projects in the corporation. However, for today, let's look at a scenario where there exists a project where you have an agreement with a client that certain type of work is non-billable, even though in general it is, or in the scenario where only a certain type of work is billable, even though in the larger corporation, multiple types of works are billable. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here we have the billing rule section, and I'm going to press add. And I'm going to choose my type of time and material. There's no setup required in this section. In this section, we determine which projects are following this rule. So in this case, I'm going to pick my 138 project that I have set up, and I'm going to move it into my selected projects. And then I'm going to click on this chargeable categories. And here, I get to decide which type of work is chargeable to the client and which is it. Now note that this applies for both hour and expense type categories. So if you have a situation where generally airfare is chargeable to the client, but in this case it's not, you can use this as well. I'm just going to demonstrate this with hour categories. So we're going to say any time set in consulting is chargeable. And we're going to set that any time set in, let's say this general contractor labor crew is chargeable. And what I'm specifically doing is I'm leaving my project management category not in this side. So what that means is project management is non-billable. So now that I have this set up, let's go take a look. So I'm going to close this. I'm going to close this. I'm going to return to my project. I'm going to move it to in process. And just to ignore this, it's just because I didn't set up a budget for this project. All right, so we have an in-process project. So let's go book some time against this. So I'm just going to use an hour journal. This can, of course, come from a timesheet as well. And let's open this up. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to say that we booked 10 hours of consulting. We're going to book... 10 hours of our labor crew. And I'm going to do 30 hours of PM work. Now, if we look to the right here, we'll see all of these are listed as billable. Essentially, what this billing rule does is it overrides line properties. So even though this says billable, as you'll see later, it won't be. For just our information, let's look at our sales price. So we have a sales price of 300 and we have more sales price of 300. So that means that we have 20 hours at $300, which equates to $6,000 that we can bill. All right, this 30 here, which is at 350, I'm gonna make this a bit of an easier number, so let's make this 20, means that there's an additional $7,000, which without the billing rule, we would bill, but for now, we should not be. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to post these three transactions. All right, that journal has been posted. So now let's go and invoice our client. So I'm going to go back to the contract. And I'm going to create an invoice proposal. And if we scroll to the right, we'll see the 6,000 that we needed. And we can see that it's only coming from our consulting and our labor crew. And so essentially what we've done is now we've set up 
specific categories which we can build on this project. This is useful when you have, as I said before, any differences between what your company generally does. So I'm going to go ahead and post this invoice for $6,000. And with that, it completes our demonstration of the time and material billing rule. Thank you, and I'll see you next time for our fifth installment of this session.